If you're not moving forward after you end a toxic relationship with narcissists, then you're stuck. You're frozen. And chances are it's because you're looking back. If you're looking back, it's impossible to move forward, right? You might as well be dead. Let's talk about how important it is for you to keep your eyes in front of you and move forward away from the narcissistically abusive people in your life. My name is Kevin and this is The Royal We. Before I continue with this message, I wanna let you know that I'm here for your support. I know you're hurting and confused coming out of narcissistic abuse. I do take one-on-one -on -one phone calls. In addition to that, I have a brand new life coaching program where I teach every day, Monday through Friday, live with questions and answers. It's only $49 for the entire month. You cannot afford to miss out on it, especially those of you who are trying to start a brand new life. Listen, it doesn't matter when you get started, just get down there and get started. Now we're talking about how important it is for you to keep your eyes forward and to not look back. Looking back will have you frozen. First of all, understand that when you are called out of an abusive relationship, it's much more deeper than you just dealing with bullies and mean people. This is in fact the hour of division. I want to share some ancient literature with you, ancient scripture that talks just about this. I believe it uh, was Jesus that said in the New Testament of the Bible, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword, and I will divide mother from daughter, father from son, brother from sister. I will divide up families. Nobody really understood those scriptures and what it meant, what it was referring to. We do now. A lot of people call this day and age that we're living in as the great reset. You can call that the great reset. It's the hour of division. Now, am I going to be here and talk about this spiel about the second coming and this is it and we're all going to heaven now? No, no, not at all. But I can definitely recognize this hour as the hour of division. That makes sense. Why? Because we're all divided. There's other ancient literature that supports this too. The parable of the, the wheat and the tares. How many of you know that parable? Another parable given by Jesus. Let them grow together the wheat and the weeds, and at the right time, we'll separate them, right? Well, this is that time. But what's important to understand about this time that we live in is that if you are being separated, if you're being called out, if you're being sifted out, whether it's from family, a job, group of friends, I mean, you know what you were dealing with, right? Just like I know what I was dealing with. If you're being torn apart from that, don't fight against it. And don't look back. Because that's the worst thing you could possibly do. It's going to freeze you. It may even destroy your life. <laughs> if, the, if the narcissist don't destroy you, looking back will, ultimately. Because it'll keep you stuck. I mean, that's the ancient story of, of Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Now I brought up the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in yesterday's message. Now, how many of you are aware that when Lot and his wife left Sodom, in that story, Lot's wife looked back. And as that ancient story goes, she turned into a pillar of salt right there. Another way to describe that is she froze. She turned into a statue. She stopped dead as she stood, looking back. A lot of people will wonder why. Why did she have to turn to a pillar of salt? Why did God do that? What does that mean even? Well, let's first try to tackle this question. What was she looking back for? Now that you have experienced narcissistic abuse as, as well as I have, and we've had to walk away from family members, we've had to walk away from in-laws, we've been divided from brothers and sisters, we've been divided in our own church, we now understand how easy it is to look back, right? So what are some of the reasons that she could have been looking back? Well, number one, maybe she could have been looking back because she didn't believe that she should have left. How many of you have been there? Wondering if leaving the toxic situation is the right thing to do, huh? Yeah, maybe it's wrong. Maybe you shouldn't leave the toxic situation. Maybe you should just learn to be okay with their lifestyle of debauchery, <laughs> craziness. I'm gonna go this way because it's loud over there. 
Maybe you should be okay with their name calling. Maybe you should be okay with their abusive nature. Maybe you should be okay with how they demean you, devalue. Maybe you're the one that's wrong and maybe you should just stay there. After all, it's everything you've always known. You don't know what's in front of you. That's scary. So you can fall into complacency and it's almost like telling the Lord, if you will, whatever you believe in, the universe. No, I'm gonna take it a step further. Your self-worth. To each one of us, we've been given an amount of self-worth. And when you stop, when your self-worth, by the way, tells you to leave, listen, and that's what's speaking to you. It's saying, listen, you don't deserve to be treated this way. And so you start to leave. But then when you stop, what you're doing is you're fighting back against your own self-worth. You're arguing back. You're saying, no, 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 maybe you are wrong. What's that say? And it says you don't know what your self-worth is, right? So one of the reasons is you may think that you're wrong, that you may fight against your own self-worth that you've been given and stay. And so you wanna look back and stay. That could be one reason you look back. What's another reason that you can look back? How about looking back to see if, if, <laughs> to see if those people are being destroyed? How many of you have wanted to look back just to see if they're getting some form of karma? Look back at the narcissistic family, hoping to see them destruct and self-destruct and hopefully they're tearing each other's eyeballs out, right? Over what they did to you, right? That way you can stand there and, and applause and say, yes, yes, now that I'm gone, you could all tear each other apart, right? Or now that I'm gone, I can watch you be destroyed. So there's a couple of reasons, a couple of ideas that you and I can toss around as to what would cause Lot's wife to look back at Sodom. So she looked back for one of those reasons. Either she thought that she was wrong for leaving, which by the way, means she can't move forward. Or she looked back because she wanted to see Sodom punished, which means you also can't move forward. Either way, you can't move forward. Either way, her heart froze because it was in the wrong place. She turned to a pillar of salt because she was in the wrong place. She wasn't in a place to move forward. She was only gonna trip everybody up. She was most likely going to be the one who would say, stop, slow down, wait, let's look, no, stop, no, let's not go too far, no, come on, stop, look back at Sodom, come on, no, don't, hey, Lot, stop, stop, right? But the calling on Lot to get out of there was so great that it could not be interrupted. Now, I'm under, under the personal belief from all this that number one, yeah, don't argue and don't fight against your self-worth. You can call it self-worth, you can call it the Lord leading you out, whatever the case is. I'm under the impression, don't argue with it. When your self-worth speaks and says, get out, you get out. It's for a reason. I'm also under the impression that don't look back looking to find karma. Don't look back and look at these people. Don't try to watch God destroy something. I'm under the impression that God's not down with that, according to the ancient literature. Right? Nothing's going to upset him more than somebody who wants to be a looky-loo and see God's judgment poured out on something else. Don't do that. Just move forward. Trust that your life is forward. It's in front of you. But why is it so difficult for us these days? Listen, it's, it's been difficult, uh, apparently, since the beginning of time. If Lot's wife was looking back, it's no wonder we look back. But we have to pay attention to what makes it so much more difficult for us. We have a lot more things that attach us and a lot more things that we have to pay attention to. Listen, you cannot leave an abusive relationship but still connect with them on social media. That's big time looking back, right? You can't be doing that. You gotta get rid of them on social media. You gotta get rid of their telephone numbers. You gotta get rid of their mailing address. Listen. <laughs> when the Bible or, or the ancient literature or even, even it, it doesn't have to be the Bible. It could be in, in the world of psychology. It could be Dr. Romani. She's going to tell you, have nothing to do with these people. Get away from them. 
and get away means get away. It's no different than what the ancient literature of the Bible was trying to tell us. Get away from these people. Have nothing to do with ill-tempered individuals. It doesn't mean you can't be kind to them if you come across them, right? Toss one an apple. It means get away from them to cut the ties of intimacy. Your intimacy doesn't belong with the ill-tempered, with the narcissist, with the controlling, manipulative, what Dr. Jordan Peterson would call the dark triad. Your intimacy does not belong with these people, right? Let the dark triad of the world be intimate with the dark triad, if there is such a thing. You focus your efforts, focus your intimacy based on your self-worth, but first you have to honor your self-worth. Stop looking back, look forward, keep walking forward because something better is waiting for you out there. You have to trust that, you have to believe that. I know it to be true. <laughs> I promise you, it's true. Don't look back. Listen, I'm here for your support. As I said before, down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. In addition to that, I have a brand new life coaching program where I teach every day, Monday through Friday, live with questions and answers. It's only $49 for the entire month. You cannot afford to miss out on it. All right, especially those of you who are trying to start a brand new life. Listen, I'll be back with more for you right here on the Royal We. Until I'm back, I encourage you to watch this video. This video right here is being recommended by the YouTube algorithm and uh, because it knows what you watch. So, since it knows what you watch, I think you should pay attention to that. I mean, it's paying attention to you, so pay attention to it, I guess, right? I'll be back with more videos right here on the Royal We.